Hi Tyra, I'm Ross, uh, and I hope I can help you out with this frequency table problem. Um, so it says the table shows the number of correct answers that students gave on a recent five question quiz. And if the mean of the mean number of correct answers is four, so the average number correct a student got is four questions, we wanna find this missing number K. So a couple things first, remember that for an average, you wanna add up all of the values and divide by how many there are. And then remember that a frequency table is telling you how many times a certain result happened. So for uh, example, in this case, right, this five and 12, the 12 is telling you the frequency 12 people, uh, that represents 12 people, and the five is how many correct. So that means in this class, 12 kids got all five questions correct, uh, which is awesome. Um, and then five kids got four, two kids got two, et cetera, et cetera. And we don't know how many kids got three correct. So we're going to have to use the average that they already gave us um, and use that to solve it. So here's how you would set that up. In an average, normally you just add number plus number plus number plus number. In this case, we're going to use some multiplication to be a little clever about how we do that. So in this case, we would technically have to put 12 fives, right? So there were 12 students that got fives. So we should put five plus five plus five plus five, 12 different times to, to account for all those. Or we could just put 12 times five. That'll do it all at once. So that's our first 12 scores. And we can do that same thing for the uh, question, four correct questions. There were five people, five students that got four questions correct. And that's what we're trying to figure out, right? Uh, we're talking about a mean correct answer. Uh, and we'll do the same thing with this middle one, even though we don't know how many uh, students that is. We're going to put three times K. And you can do this for every column of your table all the way down to one. So if we multiply all those, that's a little funky, that should be one times one. If we multiply all those, we're gonna get the total number of questions that were answered correctly. Uh, and now we need to divide by how many students there were. So we can get that from this frequency part, right? Remember that 12 is 12 students and then five students. So we need to add all those up to figure out the total number of students. So that would be 12 plus five. And I'm going backwards for some reason, but. You could start at the beginning, doesn't matter. Start at one and then two, uh, plus K, because we don't know it, but it's still gotta go there, plus two, plus one. So doing all that, right? Dividing this top uh, total number of correct questions over the um, total number of students would get us the average, which convenient, uh, conveniently we already know is equal to four. So setting this up, we now have a, an equation, pretty messy equation, but still an equation that we can solve to figure out what k is. So let's clean this up a little bit. If we multiply out all these numbers on top and add everything up, uh, the 3k, 3 times k, will have to stay by itself because it's not like terms with any of these other numbers. And then all those other numbers, 12 times 5 plus 5 times 4, all that other stuff is going to total up to 85. So I'm going to put this whole top thing is going to turn into 3k plus 85. And then on the bottom, similarly, the k's got to stay alone. It's not a like term. But all those other numbers, uh, all those numbers added together would be 20. So k plus 20 on bottom. And then we still got this equal to 4. So now it looks a lot cleaner. Cleaner. Now a few more steps to go. This is actually going to be pretty quick. We cannot solve this thing while k is still in the denominator. So we're going to fix that. Think about it this way. I have 3k plus 85 divided by k plus 20. Well, normally we do inverse operations where we talk about the opposites, right? So what's the opposite of k plus 20? Uh, excuse me, what's the opposite of dividing by k plus 20? The answer is to multiply by k plus 20. That'll cancel that out. It's not in the denominator anymore, and we just got to make sure to do the same thing on this side to keep this equation balanced. So now let's write out what we have. We have 3k plus 85 and then equal to 4 times k plus 20. I'm going to save a step here and just go ahead and distribute that 4. It's going to have to happen anyway, right, because I want to get rid of those parentheses. So I'll do 4 times k, which will be 4k, 
and then 4 times 20, which is a positive 80. Now at this point, you can probably tell the last couple steps that are going to have to happen here. Uh, I need to get the k's on one side, the numbers on one side, so I'm going to subtract 85 on both sides, cancel there, and then I'm going to subtract 4k on both sides, subtracting because that's a positive 4, so the opposite is a negative. And you could do this in two separate steps, I'm just trying to save a little bit of time. And then 3 minus 4 here, 3k minus 4k would be negative 1k equals, and then 80 minus 85 is negative 5. We still need to get k by itself, but one last thing to do, divide or multiply by negative 1, and you'll find that k is equal to 5. And you could double check that. If you went back and plugged the k up, in, uh, substituted the k up in, in up there and did all the math, you should end up with 4. So what this means, k equals 5, means that five different students got three questions correct. And this is a strategy that you can use in really any type of problem that has to do with um, a frequency table and, and averages. Um, so I hope this helps you as you do future problems.